I normally make video tutorials from my own Facebook group, Fans of Serif Software. But this time I'm going to do one on behalf of another Facebook group called Affinity Photo. Now one of the members of this group, Bert Seinstra, I'm hoping I am pronounced that correctly, um, displayed this image here of this girl's face and then how he altered it to this high key image which is a very bright um, sort of very white image and it also changed the eye colour to a green colour and then he then went on to p um, post images of the different steps he took to make this image from that image so I offered to sort of make a video tutorial to sort of then sort of pass on his lesson to other people so this is basically what I'm going to do now the image is on pixels. That's how you pronounce that. I mean, it does say the source image comes from Pixabay.com, but I'd looked on Pixabay.com earlier and couldn't find it. Um, but I will add a link to this image in the description to the video. Um, so the first two steps that Bert has here is removing some spots and blemishes with a removal tool and then bringing the brightness up to 100% and the contrast to 35% so let us do that All right, so I have the image open and this is how it ended up looking with my first run through so we will try it again on this one so the first thing he like he said is to do some spot and blemish removals so we have the clone brush tool over here on the left and I'm going to zoom in and there are a few spots there. I'm not going to take every single one out I'm just going to do a few just to show you how that works um, now I'm using this on a PC and on the PC you press the alt key and when you press that you get a little sort of crosshair turn up I believe on the Mac it's an option key I think um, but I'll press that and if you click in the area you want to sample from that where you move it to the, and then click again it will sample from that area into the area you want to replace you just need to have a sort of fairly low opacity and uh, I've got my hardness set on 5 and the opacity set on 38 I'm go I've left the flow at 100 because I'm only doing single clicks if you want to take another one out, you can either stay from the position you was in or just press Alt or Option again and pick a new sample area and just click a couple of times to get that. So it's just a case of going round and removing any blemishes and spots that you may want to get rid of. Um, obviously if you're going to come into a darker area you will definitely have to resample from that area to sort of help it blend better so it's just a case of keep sampling from different areas nearby the sample you want to get rid of so the tones will be similar I'm not, I'll say I'm not going to do all of these but I'm just going to take out this these spots on her cheek and this sort of mark here on her lip so I'm just going to come close to that area and sample and then maybe sample from the other side just to help blend that in so I press Control and Zero to come out. So I'm not going to go to. In fact, I've probably gone a bit too much with that area there. It's gone a bit too light. So let me resample that area, and that's it. I've not done all of them, um, but you get the idea of how that works. So now we want to add the adjustment, and I'm going to do that from the adjustment button here. So I'm going to click on that and come up to brightness and contrast 
Um, now Bert, he went right 100% on brightness and 35% on contrast. 35%. So, but I mean, if you if you if you think that's too much or too, you can always come down. But I will leave it on 100 because that was how um, Bert did that. Now I'm not 100% certain whether he just clicked on this to close it to keep the adjustment still in the layers panel but I'm going to merge that in I don't think it really matters a great deal but I merge that in so going back to the next step the second step is to copy a green background and place it above the eyes so I'm going to use the rectangle tool here I'm just going to draw it over the eyes. You don't have to have green, you could have other eye colours, but I'll stick with green. Let's go slightly darker. And then the next bit it is to bring the layer, green layer, below the layer of the portrait. So that's fairly easy. You just click and drag this down to the bottom and it will go underneath the image and the next step is to use your razor brush with a low opacity low flow and a hardness of zero to get those green eyes back so come back to this I will zoom in to where the eyes are and the razor brush tool is this one here on the panel over on the left I've got an opacity of about 22, but you can roughly about that area. I've got the flow set on 19, but you can go a bit lower or a bit higher. And the hardness, mine's on 4, but you can do it on 0 like Bert did. And then all you've got to do is have a brush size that will fit into the eye that you are going to be bringing the colour through on. Now also, you do need to make sure you are on the image layer and not on the layer that has the colour. Now obviously this only really works with images with models with light eyes and if it's got someone with really dark eyes it's not going to really work so well I don't think because we're just erasing enough of this top image and because of the low opacity it's not completely removing some of that texture from the eye and then it's just a case of keep going over that area until you've got enough of the colour coming through which I will leave at that I'll press control and zero to zoom out now you could if you want highlight the bottom layer and lower the opacity if you think the colour is a bit too strong um, I'm going to put mine at about 85% and then the next bit in the tutorial was finally selected the brush paint tool selected alt with color of the skin and brushing with a low, low settings the darkness around the eyes um, wrong one that one now I'm guessing what he means by that is that you sample the skin color um, on the PC I mean I can just click on this uh, eyedropper up here I can just click and hold that bring it down to an area on the picture that I want to sample the color from come to the paintbrush tool and by default it probably be black but if I just click on this is the sample that I've taken if I just click on that it will make that the brush color and I have again I've got low settings opacity of 24 flow of 5 hardness of 4 and I'm just gonna I'm on the wrong layer let me delete that a second I should have been on that layer the program automatically made up a layer f for me there what I actually wanted to be was on the 
image layer. So I'm just sort of taking some of the darkness from under the eyes. And then I'm going to sample a bit from this side of the face. Make that the brush color and just remove some of this darkness under the eyes on this side. Right, well you get the idea. I will leave that at that. So from the start image as you can see this is you know a totally different looking image now. Now if I just quickly go back to this um when I when some comments were made about this la la later on in the this conversation people said like it was best if you had an image that had sort of a dark slightly darker side and a lighter side so when you had the end result you do have some definition on one side not necessarily on the other um, so it's not always easy to find a picture like that. So I thought I would just try, and this is an extension of Bert's tutorial, and do it, try it on an image like this. Now, now this here I got from Unsplash, which is a free download. It's pictures by Pete Bellis. And I will add a link to this image as well if you want to try this out. So this is also different in the sense that it's a colour picture and I think the effect probably works best if it's black and white so we will have to convert this to black and white. So I'll come to this image here. So the first thing I'm doing I need to do is to make this a black and white image. So I'm going to come to the adjustment black and white and then I'm just going to tinker slightly with the, mainly the red and yellow um, just to get a sort of a contrast and definition in this image right and I'm going to merge that into the image so although there is a little bit of a shadow down the edge of her face there's no real sort of color difference between light and dark on her face here so I'm going to try and add a bit of artificial light um, which is a tool I don't use very often but I will give this a go I come to filters lighting and I'm going to, I'm going to click on the back node and hold and drag this and I'm going to drag this outwards from the image so the light is coming in from this side I'll just zoom out slightly and I'll click and drag these arms out on the outside and even spread these ones out as well because I don't really want like two much of the dark edges coming in on the side here but I can drag this middle one in so and if you come in too far you start to lose some of the detail here so I don't want to come I'm going to put it about there I think I can always increase the ambient light so it's up to about 60. Right, this is very hit and miss really, as far as for me anyway, I'm not that necessarily that good with the tool, but zoom in. I don't want to lose too much detail here on her hair, so but I do want to introduce a light source on the side. Yeah, that might be okay. Let me I'll click apply on that one. 
All right, so the next thing we want to do is add the brightness and contrast adjustment. So again, you've got the adjustment here. Now each picture that you may use will have its own settings. So whereas in Bert's one, he was up 135 on this particular image, especially with the lighting that I've just done, that doesn't work. So let me drop this down but we are still looking for that very bright high key effect so all right so I'm gonna go with that on this one so that's like I've got a brightness of 45 and a contrast of 19 so again I'll merge that into the image so now it's just pretty much the same as the other process is to draw a coloured box over the eyes. This time I'll make her eyes blue. Let's go with a slightly darker blue. Drag that to the bottom. Make sure you are highlighted on the image layer. Zoom in. Get your eraser tool. I'm going to keep the settings I already have, but that was like opacity of just around 20, flow of 19, hardness of 4. Yes, I am on the image layer. And then get a brush size to suit. And then just start erasing some of this image layer to bring back the blue colour that's underneath. So if you just keep going until you've got as much as you of this colour you want to come through. Alright, and press control and zero to come out. And then I'll just lower the opacity slightly just so there is a hint of blue there. Let's go with that's about seventy five percent on that image. Right, now there's not so much darkness under her eyes, so I'm not going to bother um, sampling an area and brushing it out, mainly because you know, a lot of this darkness under her eyes is the makeup, so it's sort of supposed to be there, I think. So I am going to leave that one like that. So t two different effects here, you know, very similar, but that is a very high key. And this one is only sort of a, a slightly milder high key version. But you'd have to adapt your settings to suit the image that you're working on, really. So thank you for Bert for allowing me to do this video. And thank you for watching.